Rochester, New York, Compere, Ben Giambroni, and Bill Walton. What is going on here? How can that be? The long, strange trip indeed continues. <laughs> Great to be back here in the basketball capital of the world. <laughs> Who cares since it was before I was born, back in 1951, that Rochester won their NBA championship? Alex Hannum and Red Holtzman, great friends of mine. Fortunately, the Razor Sharks have moved in to fill the void. <laughs> if I could get Benny, Bunny Skirball up here, please. Bunny? Bunny, one more time, please. Please, Bunny, don't let the podium block you. Please, come over here. Now, if you just got back from the Mars Hotel, you might think that Bunny and I would have no chance whatsoever of being of the same human species. But in the years that I've known Bunny, she is the perfect example of what my greatest mentor, what my greatest teacher, John Wooden, talked about when he said that basketball, like life, is not a game of size and strength. It's a game of skill, timing, and positioning. It's not how big you are, but how big you play. It's not how high you jump, but it's where you are and when you jump. So when I look at Bunny Skirball, I think not of a little four foot, seven inch no. dynamo. <laughs> I think of someone who it makes no difference how big she is. It's how big she plays. She is a true giant. Thank you so much, Bunny, for all you've done. Great to see so many old friends here, led, of course, by Pat Olivetto. From the St. Bonaventure Bonnies, 1973. Is Pat here still, or did he have to go back to work already? Pat, where are you? If you could please stand up. Pat, there he is. What a handsome stud he is indeed. And to run in to Pat, and Pat brought the program from December 22nd, 1973, St. Bonaventure at UCLA, Pauley Pavilion, and what a fine picture. Although, Pat, you would never have passed Coach Wooden's ban on facial hair or the length of the hair on top of your head. Nice to see, though, Pat, that you did bring the bench pass. <laughs> most importantly, most importantly, Pat brought the box score of the game. Yes, and that bench pass, so appropriate, uh, emblematic and representative of where Pat played in the rotation. And when you look at this team, Roskis, Moore, Price, Flanagan, Hawker, all names that Coach Wooden never mentioned for the St. Bonaventure Bonnies. And then the UCLA team with the All-Americans, Jamal Wilkes, Dave Myers, Andre McCarter, Marcus Johnson, Greg Lee. And I was the starting center on that team. And while Pat was a great enough defender that he held me to 13 points on only 6 for 10 shooting, please bear in mind, folks, that as the starting center, I was backed up by two guys who outscored me. <laughs> so with the combined center position getting over 30 points, St. Bonaventure and Pat Alavedo, they had a tough night in Pauley Pavilion. And don't feel bad, Pat, you weren't the only team. With a final score, went right down to the wire, believe me, 59 points for St. Bonaventure, UCLA held to 111. <laughs> Pat Olivetto, I'm very sad to say, did not score, did get a rebound, certainly did not get an assist. We know Pat's game all too well. Something very wrong here in the box score. Pat was not called for a single foul. And I know full well, with the pain in my back that I still have to this very day, the 32 years since Compeer was established back in 1973, the same year that Pat Olivetto brought his St. Bonaventure team out to Pauley Pavilion. I know how much Pat truly fouled in that game. That guy was a hack. 
So nice to see all my friends here. None more important than the Palermo family. Jim, Patty, Mr. Palermo. We're sorry that your lovely bride couldn't make it today. I know she's busy. And then my best friend. Come here all about being a friend. I have no greater friend on earth than your local hero, Ricky Palermo from Patavia. Ricky, so wonderful to see you. And to be here in your flower city, to make a pilgrimage to the Sonnenberg Gardens. How terrific that was. Ricky, you look better than ever. You are a true champion. As were Josh and Lily up here earlier. And for me, to be here today in Rochester, don't get here much anymore since the Grateful Dead stopped touring. Used to come to the War Memorial Auditorium right next door here. Now I know they've changed it to the Blue Cross Arena, but that's all right. It makes no difference about names. We're talking about substance. We're talking about the ability to make a difference by being a friend and changing lives. And the celebration that you're having here with Compeer today is what I lived for in basketball. Basketball, the most perfect of all games, where all you have to do is wait for the opening tip. And once they put that ball in play with the fate of Western civilization in the balance, it's who wants to work, who wants to dream, who wants to chase it down. The same dream that I had as a young boy growing up in my hometown of San Diego, California, where I still live to this very day in the same house for 26 years, six blocks from the hospital that I was born in, 10 minutes from the house that my parents have lived in and shared for the last 55 years. That same dream when I saw Josh and Lily up here desperately searching for a friend because that was me as a young boy. Because you see, here I was, Little Billy Walton from San Diego, California, with his red hair and his big nose and his freckles and his speech impediment, a horrendous stutterer, couldn't speak at all till I was 28 years old. Couldn't say hello, couldn't say thank you. You'll learn, you'll learn over the course of the next who knows how many hours that as a reform stutterer, you can't get me to shut up once I got the microphone here. And there I was, basketball the perfect game. Unlike football, which is basically a halfway house between the army and prison. <laughs> Baseball, a bunch of fat, out of shape guys standing around, injecting themselves with steroids and scratching themselves all the time. But basketball, the perfect game where you're running up and down the court and the celebration continuing all the time with the wind blowing through your hair the sweat just pouring off your body and you're up and down the court barking at the officials who can't seem to get the call right come on make a call go back to Foot Locker where you belong <laughs> or the coach who for some reason can't seem to find the right combination of players come on coach I'm tired of doing this by myself give me somebody else here out, out to get me some rebounds but then the greatest thing about basketball that I haven't found in any other part of life is that when things aren't going your way, there is nothing like that perfectly placed elbow right into the rib cage of the opponent to get you back into your rhythm. The rhythm that I had as a basketball player from the very beginning, when the game was my religion and the gym was my church. And here I was, little Billy Walton, playing for Blessed Sacrament Elementary School and dreaming, playing for one of the great coaches, one of the great teachers and mentors I ever had, Rocky, my first coach, who was so positive, so upbeat, so perfect. And here it was, playing all the sports, just chasing the dream, the dream of being part of something special. And I can remember when I was in the seventh grade, and it was just getting started for me, and I was happening as a basketball player, and it was all falling into place. And my dad, the most unathletic person I've ever seen, my